Hello everyone, my name's Adam, and in this video we're going to take a look at data. Data! Specifically, the value of using large amounts of data. Now there are tons of examples out there in which we can see the benefit of using lots of data. Like for example, when making an online purchase and deciding between two similar products with similar prices, would you choose the one that has a 5 star rating based on 17 reviews, or the one that has a 4.5 star rating based on thousands of reviews? We could also talk about many real-life examples in which having lots of data makes it easier to see patterns and trends. But in this video, we're going to look at the need for a large amount of data in a different context. And that context is taking a photo. Now, I'm not just talking about any old photos here. I'm talking about taking pictures of other worlds. Did you know that many of the other planets in our solar system can be seen with the naked eye? Well, it's true, and on this August night, we can easily spot both Jupiter and Saturn in the sky. But how easy would it be to get a good photo of these two gas giants? Unfortunately, snapping a picture with a cell phone camera, or even a DSLR equipped with a zoom lens, does not deliver impressive results. To capture even the slightest bit of detail, we need... A telescope. Now, we could just attach a standard camera to the telescope like this, but for a variety of technical reasons, we're better off using a dedicated astrophotography camera connected to a computer. But even with a high quality telescope and a camera specifically designed for planetary imaging, a single snapshot lacks clarity and detail and is, well, a bit disappointing. It turns out that even with good equipment, we have to battle another obstacle, the Earth's unsteady atmosphere. The continual motion of our atmosphere is actually what causes stars to appear to twinkle. When looking at planets through a telescope, this atmospheric turbulence shows up as a fuzzy or wobbly film in front of the planet, kind of like looking at the bottom of a swimming pool through its wavy surface. Needless to say, this poor seeing, as astronomers put it, makes it tough to get a crisp planetary photo from a ground-based telescope. So how do we get around the problem of poor seeing? Well, we use a clever technique called lucky imaging. To see what that's all about, let's head to the backyard and try to get some decent photos of Saturn and Jupiter. Okay, so here we are in my backyard in Hamilton, Ontario. It is August the 5th, 2021, and it's about 10 after 12. I'm gonna keep my voice down because some of the neighbors are sleeping with their windows open. I have the telescope all set up and it's aligned to track the sky. The camera is connected and right now it's pointing at Saturn, as you can see. And as we can see, the seeing is um, not that great. You know, it's pretty blurry there, kind of wobbly, not a lot of detail, but it should be good enough to get a decent image. So here's where the large amount of data comes in. Instead of taking a single image, I'm actually going to take thousands of images. And the way I'm going to do that is to record a video at a very high frame rate, like over 100 frames per second. And the idea is that each of those frames will essentially freeze the seeing or uh, the atmosphere uh, at an instant. And we'll end up with a bunch of frames. Some of them will be good, they'll have clarity and they'll show detail and a bunch of them won't be useful. But the point is we can then use software to kind of pick out the best frames and then combine them or stack them to give us uh, a good image. So I'm going to start recording that video now. I'll do a three minute video for Saturn and then uh, we'll see what we can get. So here we go. All right, I think I got a decent capture of Saturn. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for Jupiter, but I'm going to wait until it's a little bit higher in the sky. We want the planet to be as high in the sky as possible so that we're shooting through less atmosphere. So we'll come back when Jupiter is a little bit higher. Okay, as you can see, we now have the telescope pointing at Jupiter, and we can also actually see some of its moons. Here, I'll show you a little more clearly. There they are there, that's pretty cool. Okay, so this time we're only going to take a two minute video because if we go much longer than that, the surface details are going to start to get blurred because of the rotation of the planet. So we'll do a two minute video. And um, you know, one of the hardest things here is trying to keep the planet in frame when we're recording that video. So what I'm using is actually a wireless game controller to control the telescope, uh, which is uh, pretty handy. So here we go, two minute video of Jupiter. Let's see what we can get.
All done. Let's head inside and see what we have. All right, so I've loaded our Saturn video into the stacking software here, which is called Auto Stackert. And what it's done is analyzed all of the frames, all 18,148 frames, and ordered them from best quality to worst quality. And we can actually kind of scroll through them and see, we start with the higher quality frames and work our way down to the low quality frames. And it's also created this handy graph here, which shows us what it thinks that we have in terms of quality for our frames. So over here we have the higher quality frames, the higher part of this green curve represents those. And where we start to get lower here on this green curve, that represents our lower quality frames. So what I need to do is I need to pick the number of frames or the percentage of frames that we'll use for our stacked image. Now, I'd like to use as many frames as possible, but I don't want them to be bad quality frames. I don't typically like to choose frames that are below this um, this 50% middle line here but I unfortunately I don't have a lot of frames that are above that line so I think I am going to dip down below that line a little bit and maybe choose um, we'll choose 25% of our frames for this stack so I'm going to just tell the software to stack 25% of the frames and uh, let's see what we get And here's the quality graph for our Jupiter video, a little bit better than the Saturn one. And we have 15,437 frames here. And once again, I think we'll take the best 25%. I usually like to take a little bit more than that, uh, but we'll just work with what we have here. So 25% of 15,437 frames, that's about 3,860 frames. Let's do it. Okay, the stacking is done. Here's what our two stacked images look like, and already you can notice a pretty significant improvement. But the real magic happens when I then use a program called Registax to sharpen the images. Check this out. I've loaded our stacked Saturn image into Registax. Now take a look what happens when I start sharpening different layers of the image. Wow, that's pretty good. Now let's do the same thing for our Jupiter image. So there you have it. We were actually able to get some pretty good pictures of Saturn and Jupiter, but we would not have been able to do that without first collecting loads of data in the form of thousands of image frames. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and see you next time.